the Genesis GV80 is good, there is no doubt about it. And the fact it was the brand's first ever SUV probably made it feel even more special. For an Encore, this GV70 does an even better job of establishing the brand's SUV credentials, and this turbocharged four-cylinder, well, it makes a strong case for skipping the V6. car reviews don't forget to share our channel and subscribe so you can catch some of this and maybe even a little of that i'm really starting to wonder if the hot streak is ever going to end for genesis because here we are what six years and five vehicles later and they just keep getting better and better no they haven't been perfect but they are improving each and every time. And now they are genuinely competitive with big brands like Mercedes-Benz or BMW, and not just because they are affordable by comparison, they are really good. Case in point, just take a look at this year's autotrader.ca awards. Genesis won five, including one for the best overall SUV, and that is this GV70. So let's talk a little bit about why starting with the styling and no i don't think we're all going to agree with the way it looks but i happen to think it looks pretty good for the most part now one thing i do really dig is that every one of genesis's vehicles looks just a little bit different it's a variation of the design language so this definitely doesn't look like a smaller gv80 it has a lot more rounded edges instead of the sharp ones like that gv80 does but i also like the fact that it has the proportions of a Porsche Macan if you take a look at it. I really dig that, but something I'm not so crazy about, I can't understand what the designers were thinking with the way that chrome strip drops in front of the rear quarter glass instead of behind it. It just draws way too much unnecessary attention to what's an inconsequential part of this or any other SUV. It looks very odd, and that's not just me. Literally every one of my friends and family that have seen this thing, whether it's in pictures or in person, have said the same thing, and even people in parking lots have stopped me to ask what's going on with those back windows. You know, I'm all for trying new things, but that's not it. But speaking of trying new things, or at least new for today's market, I don't think I've seen any other vehicles out there with green leather upholstery. I really dig the way this looks. Again, I know it's not going to be for everyone, but I personally really like it. And I was chatting with one of the guys from Genesis Canada not too long ago, and he said more than 50% of Genesis's sales these days are for interiors other than black. That is very cool, because I know you can get blue, red, ivory. There's all kinds of interior choices across the lineup and it is really cool but this one with the tan accents i really like the way it looks and the same goes with the interior overall lots of cool design features nice little cues that you don't see elsewhere and that makes this stand out something else you're going to notice is that there are no shared components with other products from the hyundai group lineup yes the screen is the same but that doesn't stand out i'm talking about stuff like the window switches and buttons you know, in the G70, back when I reviewed that, the pre-facelift version, there were lots of little touches that were shared from the same Hyundai Group parts bin as something like the Elantra. And that was a problem for me. It didn't help to elevate the experience when there was that familiarity with an economy car. And if you take a look at the Audi Q5, there are no shared components with something like the Volkswagen Tiguan. And that is very much by design. So it looks like Genesis has finally gotten that right. You're seeing it here as well as in some other Genesis products that are being updated in recent years. There are no shared components and that to me is key. And something else I really like in here, Genesis didn't go away from physical controls in favor of touch. Yes, you have this big screen up here as well as this little panel for climate, but there are lots of physical controls in here as well. And that to me is awesome, but something I can't stand this has to be one of the most dumbfounding decisions I have seen in a long time. You have these twin dials here on the console. One of them, that's your gear selector. This is honestly insane to me. I can't imagine putting a gear selector just inches away from another one that looks and kind of feels similar. 
And you know, I can't be the only person out there that's accidentally rolled down the back window instead of the front one because I didn't look down at the panel on the door to see which switch I was hitting. Now imagine the safety implications that come with this. You're making a three point turn and you scroll across the screen instead of shift it into drive. Jody mentioned this back when she did the first drive of the GV70, and I didn't quite get it until I got in myself, but it is just bizarre. Whoever was responsible for this has some serious questions to answer to. And you know, something else that really confuses me about why this was included in the first place? This is a touch screen. It just doesn't make sense to me. And speaking of touch, that panel I talked about, it's like a haptic control. And that's how you turn on the heated or ventilated front seats or the heated steering wheel, as well as run through some different settings. But it's cool that there are some physical controls to do the basics and you can call the climate control stuff up on the screen as well. So that is really cool. And then speaking of the screen, my only issue, yes, it is touch, but it is so far away. Even for someone like me with a long reach, I actually have to lean forward in my seat from either front seat. I can't reach it from an upright seating position. And that is very bizarre. It's just so far back on the dash. Yeah, it looks kind of cool, but it definitely takes away from the usefulness of it. And then overall, because it's a widescreen format, the way Genesis has its infotainment interface laid out, you absolutely need this dial to scroll through it. It just is so difficult to swipe through all the different features and settings. So that I'm not so crazy about, but overall it's very responsive and it is easy to get the hang of the system overall. And the other cool thing I like about Genesis, Hyundai and Kia, you get shortcut buttons on the steering wheel and down here on the dashboard so you can program shortcut features. So I've got this one down here programmed to call up Apple CarPlay and that is so handy. You can also do it on the steering wheel as well. I love to see that, but you know, one thing I have against this infotainment system, considering how new this vehicle is, well, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, they are wired instead of wireless. And then the other problem, there are no USB-C ports in here, only USB-A. Keep in mind, this is one of the newest SUVs on the market as a whole. And it's just very confusing to me about why it's got some dated technologies when more modern stuff is right there and it exists in other Hyundai Group products. Even inexpensive ones, take a look at that Hyundai Elantra. You can get all kinds of good stuff like wireless Apple CarPlay in there. The fact it's not here just really is a head scratcher to me. But you know, there is a lot of cool tech in this one I'm driving like a head up display as well as a pretty cool blind spot monitoring system that gives you a live look at the vehicle when you use the signals. It just pulls it up here in the instrument cluster. You still get the sensor based blind spot monitoring that comes standard, but it's cool that you have this extra layer of safety. But then getting back to that head up display, my only complaint is that you have to adjust it through the infotainment system instead of the more intuitive way of using the steering wheel controls as well as the screen in this gauge cluster that would make more sense but it's cool it's bright and it gives you a lot of good information right there in your field of view and that stuff's just the extras like i said blind spot monitoring is standard so is forward collision warning lane keep assist as well as adaptive cruise control in every trim those extras are the ones that come with this advanced plus version i'm driving you also get the hyundai groups highway driving assist system that'll chip in with some steering assist when you're out on the highway. Even if you're not using adaptive cruise control, you do have to keep both hands on the wheel, but it is cool because it'll help you. It'll even steer through curves in the road. And like I said, you don't have to use the lane keep assist system or the adaptive cruise control. If you want to use highway driving assist, you can do that. If you want to use regular lane keep, you can do that. Or you can turn both of them off and still use adaptive cruise control. And I really like that customization because it really lets you tailor the vehicle to your individual comfort level. That is key to me. I think more vehicles need to do it like this one. And then overall, there's lots of good stuff from that base trim. And that starts at $49,000 and that includes destination. So that's your pre-tax price. And then this one I'm driving, it's 59 grand. That makes this very competitive because if you take a look at something like the Mercedes-Benz GLC class, well, it's at least a couple grand more to start. And if you want all the stuff I have here, you're gonna be well into the mid $60,000 mark. And that's kind of the case with most 
competitors, even a BMW X3 or an Audi Q5, they're all much more expensive. So it keeps that old Genesis way of being more affordable, but it doesn't feel like a step down anymore in any way imaginable. Now, obviously money isn't everything. Yes, even when it comes to premium vehicles, the GLC class, it's still excellent. But I think the key here is to drive them back to back. And I think if you do, you're going to notice there's not much separating them, even in the way they feel. And you know, I've always found there's a unique sort of substance to German luxury vehicles in general, bought Mercedes in particular. But when you drive this, you're going to notice it is virtually identical. It has a very similar feel overall. And going back to the GV80, that thing is still great, but it's just lacking that extra level of refinement you find here that really does make this a viable alternative to a GLC class, a BMW X3 or an Audi Q5. And those really are the key competitors. And when it comes to ride quality, it is a little on the rigid side, but not in a bad way. It's definitely no worse than anything else in the segment. You're gonna feel potholes and pressure cracks, but there's also good suspension damping as well. It's just that kind of jarring nature. And then same with the unsprung weight of the wheels. You're gonna feel them pull at the suspension a little bit, but it's no different than anything else in this segment. And there is a really nice composure to the way this thing cruises around. And it's pretty quiet too. That's something that stands out to me. This thing is on winter tires, but it is just silky smooth. It's quiet even with the radio off. Again, Genesis has just done a nice job of elevating the entire experience. Now, like I said off the top, this one I'm driving does have a four cylinder under the hood instead of a V6, but I really do think it makes that bigger engine totally unnecessary. It makes 300 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. Both figures are more than just about any one of its direct rivals, and it does feel like plenty. You're not gonna notice any strain. The only time you're gonna notice it's a four cylinder is above about 4,000 RPM. When you really get your foot into it, it sounds just a bit buzzy, but again, it's not a problem. It pulls really hard all the way throughout the rev range, and it is very smooth overall. The only issue I've had with the powertrain this week has been more to do with the ignition stop-start system and the brake hold together, the way they function together. Because when you get on the gas again, it really kind of lurches forward like the brakes are unlocking, but you don't have to use either of those systems, let alone both of them together. And you won't notice that issue when you shut them off. So that is really handy. But then again, it makes you wonder what was going on and why are they both included in the first place? I don't know, but it's been like this all week long. And then the other issue I do have is the fuel economy and it's a bit of a backhanded compliment because compared to the v6 this thing is way better but on the flip side i was hoping for something just a little bit better than i'm actually doing this week i'm above 10 liters per 100 kilometers yes i know it's winter time and this thing is on winter rubber but really i was expecting something down in the nines because i was able to pull that off with the mercedes even the mercedes gle with the inline six, I was able to do better than this thing manages. But then again, like I said, it was way worse in the GV80 with the V6. And even looking at their official ratings, it's the same case here. So this really is the way to go if you want to burn just a little bit less of that premium grade gas. Although I do think Genesis could have done better overall. But going back to the ride and handling, really, it is awesome. Genesis did a great job. The engineers really nailed the handling. It's got a nice weight to it. It doesn't feel too heavy, but it's also got just enough of that casualness so that it feels like a relaxed highway cruiser, as well as just a little bit of that sportiness. And it matches well with the powertrain, including the fact that this does have standard all wheel drive and you don't have to think about it. You don't have to touch anything. It just pushes torque around to where it needs to be. Now, if you get the V6, you can get a limited slip rear diff in the back, but I haven't had any issues and really, I don't think you need it. It really is more of that performance gimmick than anything else, because this is an SUV. It's meant to move people and stuff in comfort and style. And I think it does both of those things very well. And there's lots of room. Now, if you take a look at the Genesis lineup in general, well, obviously it does leave the door open to a larger GV90 because the GV80, 
Yeah, you can get it with three rows of seats, but it is a little on the smaller side compared to some competitors. But I would call this thing right sized. If you don't need all that extra room, you're gonna find everything you need in here. Like I said earlier, it's virtually identical in size to the Mercedes GLC class. And that goes for the outside as well as the inside. All the dimensions are virtually identical. And just take a look, I have tons of room in here. I am very comfortable. And the same goes with the back seats. I've got more than enough room. I'm a tall guy, I'm like 6'3", and I can fit back there no problem with the driver's seat in my normal seating position. So I think Genesis has done a good job there as well. This is gonna be great for a growing family, or if you shuttle the grandkids around from time to time, you're gonna have more than enough room. And something else I really like, the doors, they open nice and wide, low step in, and they extend all the way to the bottoms of the rocker panel. So you're not gonna get road grime on your pants when you're getting in and out in the winter time. That is such a great feature. And then if you take a look around back, I think you get 820 liters or so of space behind the back seats and it's nice and wide. I've got Patty, the pedal car back there. But she actually fits parallel across the door opening. I don't have to angle her at all. That is a testament to just how well used the space back there is. And then when you fold the back seats down, that expands to about 1600 liters total. And something I really like is you don't have to walk around to either door to fold down either side of that back seat. You can do it right from the cargo area because there are handles just inside the tailgate. That is a very underutilized feature and I'm happy to see it here. No, it doesn't have power switches like you can get in the GV80. This is a mid-grade trim, so you don't have features like that, but it is nice that you can do it because the important one is when you're loading stuff in the back and you need more room, not when you're getting stuff out. So I like the way Genesis has done that here. Packaging is everything in an SUV like this, but it's nice that utility wasn't prioritized over luxury in this GV70. You still get all kinds of good amenities, plus the styling is top notch. And it's even cool that you can get the interior in a unique color like this green. It all adds up to really help the GV70 rise to the occasion in what is a very competitive segment. I think Genesis has done a phenomenal job with this SUV. To recap, I like how well thought out the GV70's cabin is, that the 2.5 liter makes the V6 an afterthought, and the competitive pricing. I don't like the weird C-pillar styling, the twin dials on the console, or that it isn't especially fuel efficient. Right-sized luxury, that is what the Genesis GV70 delivers. The Mercedes GLC class, BMW X3, and Audi Q5, they're all well-established players in this segment, and there's nothing wrong with going with a tried-and-true product. But if you're looking to mix it up, this has everything it needs to go head-to-head -head with every single one of them, and it'll save you a few bucks in the process.